Hey, happy code miss. We're doing a split thickness skin graft case today. And you know what that means? That means we have to do some math. Look at this beautiful operative report. Okay. Patient is having a split thickness skin graft, a total area of approximately 15 by 18 on the right leg and 15 by 15 on the left leg. And remember, these are done in centimeters. We don't work in inches typically when we're doing measurements in medicine. We work with the metric system. So diagnosis, stasis ulcers of lower extremities, operation split thickness skin graft, a total area of approximately 15 by 18 on the right leg and 15 by 15 on the left leg. This is an 84-year-old female presented recently with large ulcers of the lower extremities. These were representing on the order of 50% or more of the circumference of her lower leg. They were in a distribution to be consistent with stasis ulcers. They were granulating nicely and she was scheduled for surgery findings. Large ulcers of lower extremities with size as described above. And in fact, they do have it described above. You do have to be careful sometimes. Providers will sometimes say that they describe something above and then oh, they missed it. These are irregular in shape and posterior and laterally on the lower legs. There was no evidence of infection. The ultimate skin grafting was quite satisfactory. Having obtained adequate general endotracheal anesthesia, the patient was prepped from the pubis to the toes. The legs were examined and the wounds were pulsivact bilaterally with three liters of saline with bacterin. The wounds were then inspected and there was adequate hemostasis and there was only minimal fibrinous debris that need to be removed. So you do have to be careful because sometimes they do um, significant debridements prior to placing a split thickness skin graft, but this looks like it was minimal. So it doesn't have to, it doesn't look like it was anything significant enough to separately code for. Um, once this one was accomplished, the skin was harvested from the right thigh. Oftentimes they harvest from the right thigh. It's a common area for them to take the donor um, donor material from. The wounds were then dressed with a fine, I'm sorry, oh, that was, I almost missed this. Um, once this was accomplished, the skin was harvested from the right thigh at approximately 0 0.013 inch, and then it was meshed. So that's what they mean by the split thickness skin graft, is that they do this meshing with split thickness skin grafts, and that way they can use that piece of skin and stretch it along a larger area and that skin will then just kind of fill in in the gap areas. The wounds were then dressed with a fine mesh gauze that was stapled into position as well as curlix soaked in uh, sulfamyelin solution. She was then dressed in additional curlix followed by Webril and splints were fashioned in a spiral fashion uh, that avoided foot drop and stabilized them. At the same time, they did not put pressure across the heels. The donor site was dressed with opsite. Patient tolerated procedure well and was returned to the recovery room in satisfactory condition. So it looks like we're just coating for the skin grass here. We don't have necessarily a separate debridement that's going on um, that we're going to code for. So we're, we have to do some math though here. We have to figure out 15 by 18 and 15 by 15 and what the total of those are. So we have two areas here. We have 15 by 18, 15 by 15, and we need to get our total square centimeters. So first we're gonna do our 15 by 18. And you might not, may or may not be able to see this. Here, I'll move that up. So 15 times 18 is 270. And then we have 15 by 15 equals 225. And we have to add both of these up to get the total. So 225 plus 270 equals a total square centimeters of 495. And we can add these together. I'll show you when we go over the CPT proportion because these are both on the leg. So in our CPT book, we have skin replacement surgery is on 106. So here's some of those codes I was talking about. If they do surgical preparation, which is in effect a debridement right before you place a skin graft, you, we would code for the surgical preparation, but this was just minimal. This wasn't removal of open wounds, burn, eschcar, scar, uh, release of scar, anything like that. So we're just gonna code for these split thickness skin grafts. Our codes are over here. 
<clears throat> now, before we get into the code, I just want to draw your attention to the guidelines, which state that we select the appropriate code based upon the type of autograph, the location and size of the defect, the measurements apply to the size of the recipient area. So we code it based off of where we are placing the graft. For multiple wounds, we sum the surface of all wounds from all anatomic areas that are grouped together into the same code descriptor. For example, sum the surface area of all wounds on the trunk or arms because those are grouped together. Do not sum wounds from different groupings of anatomic sites. So even if we're doing a right and a left leg, we, we group them all together because that's considered, it would be on the same anatomic group in the CPT code set. So for 15100, it's any split thickness autographed of the trunk, arms, or legs. So any area of the trunk, arms, and legs all get added together. We don't separate these out and put 59 modifiers on them. If they're from the same anatomic area, they get the same code. So we just total them. So if we notice here, it's the first 100 square centimeters or less. And then we have an add-on code that's each additional 100 square centimeters or part thereof. So we need to figure out how many units we're billing here. So we had 495 units. So we take off our first code there. That brings us 395. So that's our 15100. And then how many add-ons do we do? How many of the 15101 do we do? 15101, and remember it's part thereof. So we can do this 95 left over, and it would actually be four units. So we can take 100 out of this. So we can minus 100, minus 100, minus 100. We still have 95, which is a part thereof left over. So we can bill an additional unit for that as well. So it would be times four for the 15101. Next, of course, we're gonna need our diagnosis. So we have ulcer stasis I7.2. Let's verify in our alphabet, our tabular list. All right, I8.7.2, venous insufficiency, chronic peripheral stasis dermatitis. And then it says this ex excludes stasis dermatitis with varicose veins of lower extremities. And it actually doesn't say on here anything about st uh, varicose veins. So I think we're okay going with the I8 7.2. So we have 15100 and 15101 with four units and then I8 7.2 for our diagnosis. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you'll get alerts when I post new episodes. I will see you in the next episode. And until then, just keep on coding on.